Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Hope everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere if your still chainsaw is bogging down because today we're going over what might be wrong with it. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. So I had a customer bring in their Steel MS250 chainsaw, and he told me that it was bogging down. Now, there's a common issue with these. I always, go, of course, check compression, I check fuel, and both of these were fine. But my next step on a lot of these is the tank vent. And no one ever realizes that the tank vent might be the issue. So I thought I would go ahead and bring you along while I fix it and show you what the issue is so maybe you could fix it all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. But then I thought if I was gonna bring this one home and fix it, I got all these other steel chainsaws with different kinds of tank vents on them and I might as well show you those too because those ones also have issues. So first things first, let's go to an oldie but goodie. We got an 028 Wood Boss. Now these old steel Wood Boss chainsaws were super iconic and they ran like a scalded dog. But like all other chainsaws, I would see issues with the tank vent. And this is where the tank vent comes out of the tank. Now the problem is, is you might not even know that this is a tank vent because most of the time when someone would bring them in with their saw bogging down one of these models it would be completely missing what happens is it will harden over time and just fall off while you're running the chainsaw and you don't even know that anything was on that nipple at all it just looks like part of the casing when actually it was missing this little piece of tubing and all that's inside of it, hopefully you can see that is one set screw on one end and then there's another set screw right here in this, you know, about a quarter way through it. You put it on and that's all it was. Now there is another design that I do not have here at the house and it had more of a, a rounded base and it had a, a plastic cap that went over a filter that held it on. But what I'm thinking is over time, these, would leak a little bit and those other ones would leak a little bit too so you know the good old EPA well, they probably are intervened and of course still had to change their design so they went from having this simple you know 50 cent piece of uh, tank vent to something that's about eight nine bucks now great so on my MS440 here, still changed it up a little bit and they put this new design of tank vent in it and it goes directly into the top of the gas tank here. Now you're gonna see this same one on a lot of the blowers and uh, trimmers and stuff like that. But the problem is with these ones is sometimes they would get clogged up. Now this is a much better design because we do not see these leak that often. What we do see is the tops completely breaking off of them and them getting clogged up to where they're, they're not working either. So always check that, make sure to blow it out and you won't have any issues. But then I've got this MS290 here. Now this, you know, the 290s were great saws. I think the older ones had the tank vent where, that was just a you know, little fuel line with a couple set screws in each end, but then they came out with this design. Now it still is connected to a little nipple down here on the tank, just like that last one, but they brought a line up all the way around, all the way around the back of the carburetor and to another one of those same tank vents like they have over here on this one, just with a plastic base on it. And these seem to do pretty good. I can't, you know, say much about them. There's lots of room in here, so the line doesn't get pinched and, and it works well. It's not gonna leak gas, so that's gonna make the big gov happy. But then, what happens when you've got another chainsaw, like this MS250 that has half the space almost as that 290 does? Things get a little squishy in there. So what are our tank vents and why are they important? They put the perfect amount of pressure on the fuel, I guess. They make sure to let enough air vent out of the tank so that it's not pushing so much fuel into your carburetor that it's flooding the machine out. If your tank vent is missing, then it will just be like an open gas cap and nothing's gonna be pushing through to your carburetor. If your tank vent is clogged, it's gonna never let that pressure out of your fuel tank and it's gonna constantly be pushing as much fuel into the carburetor as possible, which the needle sometimes doesn't shut off as well and it will flood out. 
So we take the top cover off, we take the air filter off here, and we look behind here, the line goes in there, and it's tucked behind the carburetor there. But let me take a little bit more apart and show you the issue I find with this. Okay, so I've removed the two nuts holding the air filter base on, and next I'm gonna come out just a little bit on the carburetor so I can pull the choke lever out really easy like that. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the throttle lever out. I'm compressing the throttle lever and then you're just able to pop it up out of its little bracket there. Try to get where I'm not blocking the camera while I'm doing it. All right, so we got our throttle lever off. Next, we can pull the carburetor out just a little bit, but all I'm wanting to do is take this this is the um, grommet that pretty much is like a dust protector for the high and low jets. So you you know don't get a bunch of goo in there. It also covers the idle adjust right there. And this is the tank vent right here. So comes all the way just off a nipple, which you know all they had to do before you know Big Gov came in was put that that little line there with a couple set screws and you were good to go. But now they've got this big honky thing that comes all the way around the back. Now, this part right here though, see that, that squished part? It's sort of unsquished now since I've taken it off. This part was completely pinched behind the low adjust limiter cap. Now on some of these models, this grommet right here, dust protector, it's much longer and it goes all the way down on top of both the high and low adjusts and it will pinch it off really bad. And so what happens whenever it's pinched it off, it's not letting any air out. So it's completely putting way too much pressure in the tank. You're flooding your saw out. So you're flooding constantly and you're, you're gonna be bogging down. So in this case, I'm not really sure, you know, what to do with this one, because if I put another line, it's just gonna get pinched again. I could remove the limiter cap and, and possibly, you know, get some fine from the government. So I'm just letting y'all know about the situation because it's definitely something to check. It was real easy whenever it just had the one that was longer here and the limiter cap wasn't so much in the way because I would just cut this rubber piece off the back and that way it would quit squishing the line. But yeah, that's an issue right there. If it's going to keep pinching this line right here behind the limiter cap, that's definitely going to keep bogging it down. Now there's tank vents on everything and although I only went over the steels today, at least you know now if your machine's bogging down or not starting, it is definitely something to check. Now always check your compression and your fuel first to make sure that those are definitely not your issue and you know always if it's canned fuel, make sure to switch to your own premix to make sure that's not the issue even if your canned fuel is what you think is fresh. So, thanks again for tuning in to Jacanic. Hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Jacanic. Find us on Instagram at The Real Jacanic or find us at Jacanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, and have a great day.